Hey guys, Rick here with Soil Samurai Gardens. So today we are going to be doing something a little different. Uh, I always feature my own personal garden, but right now I am out at the Kansas State Johnson County Research and Extension Master Garden. This is where I work with about 30 other master gardeners and we come out and take care of this area so I thought we'd do a little bit of a tour out here so I can show you guys what we do and these guys do really great work and it is just top-notch and I wanted to show you uh, some of the different areas that we have out here so we're gonna start uh, let's start right here so this uh, area we have uh, different varieties of tomatoes growing and uh, just a mixture of things so this garden is also a all-american selection demonstration garden as well so we're just going to do a quick walk through there's uh, various vegetables and plants and herbs growing all over this place here so we have a uh, uh, another cattle panel trellis, <laughs> so have a, uh, I think that's a spaghetti squash looks like, uh, growing up it right now. So, some different herbs over here, some zinnias, and uh, this is, uh, you'll, we'll uh, run into these in various areas of the garden. Uh, these were the AAS winners, this is a petunia. Uh, varieties called tidal wave uh, red velour and then we have an ornamental pepper which was also an AAS winner and these things are absolutely beautiful so they're in uh, various areas as well we have some peppers here uh, that looks like uh, sweet potato not sure some okra in the back there over here this is where I pick <clears throat> pick uh, my asparagus so a lot of the asparagus that I get, I get it from three different areas. This is one of them. Uh, it's a big old asparagus patch. So obviously season is done uh, for now. But look like the Japanese beetles are loving this stuff as well. But it will be ready to pick again probably around March or April of next year. And we'll go forward from there. So that is that section here. Over here we have more tomatoes, one of the other master gardeners runs, and eggplant. So these guys are coming in pretty good. They took a beating from the bugs earlier on, but I treated these with diatomaceous earth and a BT and neem for the uh, some kind of a beetle, or a, a, like a flea beetle or something. And they're they're getting there. So eggplants take a long time, as you guys know. There's some peppers back here. Uh, look like Roma tomatoes. So this is actually a square foot garden box. I look got a little toad. <laughs> Can you see him? <laughs> this is a square foot uh, garden box that was uh, tried as a trial and done exceptionally well this year. So things are still growing in it now, uh, tomatoes and peppers. Looks like more sweet potatoes here. Now let's go over to this section. We have more tomatoes. <laughs> we have a lot of tomatoes here. These are, I think these are watermelon. Sugar baby watermelons. Uh, that does not look like a sugar baby. That is... Probably a cantaloupe or something. I know there's sugar babies over here somewhere. And there's uh, cucumbers on that back trellis over there. Oh, there's some. Some sugar babies here. So they're growing exceptionally well. I think this is uh, some kind of a gourd growing up on this uh, TP trellis here. And this whole bed right here, this is nothing but sweet potatoes. So it's done, doing exceptionally well. Some more uh, eggplants. So this is what diatomaceous earth looks like. It's a 
white powder you just put onto the leaves. And this is a, look like some type of a albino pepper. And then this is a, a Japanese pepper here. They look more like a, um, more elongated from that point. So not too bad as far as that one there. Oh, uh, have some type of a bean up in here not exactly sure so everybody uh, out here it's a bush bean called provider so everybody out here has their own little sections that they work and they do a um, and we all come collective collectively towards the end for our harvest and uh, most of this stuff is donated to, to uh, two or three food pantries here in the city so these are some more aromas here and last season i think we end up donating uh just over a ton of food so i think it was 2100 2200 somewhere in there so this stuff is uh the food pantries really appreciate it because we grow so many varieties of things this is called a honey baby squash some more peppers and more peppers <laughs> the california wonder pepper these things are delicious so those are absolutely wonderful here red nights and these are the uh, sweet chocolates so they'll end up turning a, a brownish red color so this bed has been harvested but uh last year we grew peanuts in this one and the rabbits <laughs> the rabbits seem to love them so we had a little cage here that we have for various vermins that are able to get in here still so i'm not sure if you can see it from the video but there is a seven foot uh, netting around the entire area that is for deer because this place is out on 300 acres so we're a small plot off of 300 acres out here and deer ran rampant uh, but the fence has been up for three years now and haven't had any deer issue just uh, uh, rabbits the occasional raccoon that's able to get in and that's pretty much it so there's an electric fence ran around the entire perimeter as well so these are squash uh, they were harvested today but they turned out okay we've been fighting the squash bugs relentlessly out here and I don't grow squash in my personal garden anymore for that reason but I've learned some new techniques about wrapping the bottom with aluminum foil so we'll give that a shot so I don't know if you guys have ever seen my owl in my garden you can probably see him on previous videos Nino Brown yeah, we've got a little owl out here they don't work but <laughs> they're more ornamental so a little pickling cucumber up here Oh, let's see what we got over here some more beans and the one lonely corn stock which is actually doing really good so uh, corn is it's pretty prevalent all, all over the state of Kansas so pretty much the Midwest and various areas of the Bible but Bible belt here more sweet potatoes oh, let's go up here and I'll show you this this is a zucchini it was grown in a cage it's gotten so big, we got to leave the cage open now. Um, but the plant is huge. So this is a 4x4 four four square box. There are two plants in here. Or maybe three. And it's gotten all outside the box, so they just leave it open now. Okay, <clears throat> let's go over here to this little covered area. This is the blueberry patch. There are six blueberry plants in here. And we keep them covered for the birds. Uh, but most of them have been picked today. And yeah, I think we last week we picked probably about 20 pounds of blueberries. It was crazy. So those typically don't make it to the food pantry because all the master gardeners love those. And, you know, these things are absolutely delicious. 
Okay, but we have uh, we keep this covered strictly for the birds. Okay, and this is called a honeyberry. So this is a new plant that went in this year. So it actually produced uh, not quite as um, not a lot just yet though, because it is still brand new. And this is a little bitty raspberry patch. So a few raspberries in the back there. So, and a few Japanese beetles as well. So the ornamentals. So ornamentals uh, cover the perimeter of this place and it really makes this thing look beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. All right, one of our master gardeners is a vinoculture guy. So he's into the grapes. I think that's the word, vino. And there's three different varieties of grapes here, so he just covered this one today uh, to keep the birds out. I forget the name of them, so we can focus in on there. But that's a table grape. This one is a grape. This is a wine grape. I forget the name of it, but they're doing really, really well. So Napa Valley, Napa, Napa Valley. <laughs> oh, watch out now. Okay, and then. Some more over here. So beautiful grapes. So any of you grape guys out there, if you recognize those, you can just uh, put it in the comments. I know these are called Mars. This is a table grape. And these are about ready. These are actually ready. So I've been picking these sporadically. So oh, delicious grape. So it has a seed in it but uh really sweet a very sweet grape okay let's go over here to our grafts okay sorry i was chewing this is a grafted apple tree so there are um three varieties here and three varieties here i don't know what varieties they are, but one of our master gardeners specializes in grafting. And this is, this this one is two or three years old. And this is actually a brand new graft that went in earlier this year, I believe it is, um, or last year. And this is an Asian pear uh, graft with uh, two different varieties. That's two, and this is or this is one on this side and this is one on this side so turn it out amazing absolutely amazing and then we have uh, somebody's taking the time to individually wrap these pears or apples or whatever kind of fruit it is but yeah birds <laughs> they seem to love this stuff out here so these, this tree, this one, and this one are the same. And then there's a variety of apple there on the end as well. These are red delicious. Actually, this one. Nope, both of them are. Uh, this one's actually a biennial, though. So it produced heavily last year. It's only a few this year. And this one produces pretty decent every year. So a little bit of bug damage, but they still turn out really, really good. So, we, man, Japanese beetles, they just hit in the garden heavy this year. Okay. And let's go over to cut flowers. So, this is an excellent butterfly garden. Last week, I think we probably had a good 40, 50 butterflies out here. It's a bit of an overcast today. So, there's a little guy right there. So, these are some small ones. You can probably hear the bees if I be quiet. So, uh, anyway, uh, we have a cut flower section over here that the ladies that run this do an amazing job of putting this together. And we'll come out and do our own little cut flowers. Here's a swallowtail. See if I can zoom in without getting too close. Love the swallowtails. 
and then the bumblebee right behind it. <laughs> so the cut flowers, they're a beautiful assortment, and you know a lot of us take them home every week, make our own little designs of in our vases or vases things. So. Uh, let me uh, sidetrack just a bit. So we have a little compost area that we make our own compost, though we don't ever use it. It's more for demonstration reasons. So it starts here, gets moved over to here, and final product typically makes it in here, though we don't have any. But the city I'm in, they dump off all the free compost that we can use over in this area. So it was all the way out to here <laughs> at the beginning of the season. So this is this is what we utilize in our our gardens. And then we have mulch that's also dumped off. So that joker was huge at one time. Uh, that we'll use for weed suppression and walkways. So much like here. So this is part of the magic. So there is a creek. Yeah, if you can see that tree line way back there, there is a creek that runs that Kansas State actually has a pump that waters their trial sections, which is those high tunnels there, there, and then if you can see this building right here on the back side of that, probably 40 acres of uh, turf grass that they do trials in, and then they also ran it into our... Uh, and to the backyard garden here. So we have several of these pumps all over the place. And then we have high pressure drip irrigation in all of the beds as well, except the uh, the the uh, perennial and native, flower, native flowers and things like that. So watering is typically never an issue. So we have three bee boxes, one here, one there, there and we have a brand new one <laughs> so it, it, i think our beekeeper came out because this guy here it was swarming so you couldn't even see the white on it um three weeks ago it was just so many bees on there so i think he's able to spread some out so bees are all nice and healthy and this is a herb section so with our nice uh walkway so all kind of different herbs growing here, marjoram, there's some rue. Uh, dug the fennel up not even half an hour ago. Uh, let's see here, some parsley, sage, various herbs that are used for culinary reasons. And then there's some marigolds on the outside. There's some peppers, more tomatoes, Swiss chard, uh, and a lot of cabbage moths I see flying around here as well. So and some deal here let's see if i can see the caterpillars the swallowtail caterpillars are actually back out now i saw some earlier not on this plant though so maybe when we get up in this area so um and more herbs and uh beautiful area okay this here is uh the salsa garden now so <laughs> with some more AAS flowers. Here's uh, some zinnias there. So let's go up here to the salsa garden. Big mammoth sunflower. So anyhow, on the back side there are four different varieties of tomatoes and some basil and things that you add in salsa. <clears throat> so. I think we're all tomatoed out, but <clears throat> uh, the guy who does this one does an amazing job. And then we decided to grow pumpkins this year. Had no idea they were going to get this big. It has just taken over. There, That is actually a walkway in the middle here. <laughs> but let me see if we can, if I can get on in here without breaking something to show you some of these pumpkins. Oh my goodness, jokers have gotten huge. There we go. So, uh, <laughs> while we have decent amount of space, uh, this was not the plan. So, these pumpkin, 
the the hang on, let me step out. The start of it is right here. I think these are two plants, two or three plants. Start of it's right here, and that guy has made it probably a good 15 feet away, <laughs> just heading towards the uh, tomatoes and the rest of the salsa garden. So here's some more ornamental peppers, and they're even overtaking that with the big old leaves. Uh, some more cut flowers. So they had the uh, garlic and the onions growing on this end here. So this was a walkway at one time that you could walk all the way underneath that trellis, but not anymore because the pumpkins have taken all the way, <laughs> taken over there. So up oh, there's a caterpillar. So this is butterfly milkweed here for the monarchs. We don't have any caterpillars yet, but I am seeing the butterflies. But we do have the black swallowtail that grows on deal and fennel. So and those guys are really awesome. So I've shown them in my garden before. And this was the reason why I wanted to build a butterfly garden, which I did. Uh, for the different pollinators, things like that. So, all right, guys, that is pretty much the garden. Uh, we have some garlic growing and drying up underneath our little hut here. So that was also built by a master, built by one of the master gardeners. And, you know, the c collectively, I mean, these guys can do any and everything. So they're, they're so amazing. And I'm really appreciative to be able to work out here with them. All right, there's some garlic that was harvested throughout the uh, throughout the garden, and it's drying there. And then we have two rain barrels, so we got a decent rain uh, day before yesterday. So both of them are actually full now. So we try to utilize that uh, when the pump, because we what we did have a drought, so. The pump wasn't kicking on in the uh, the creek back there, so we utilize this uh, the rain barrels when we can, and and um, you know that's why everything looks so happy and healthy. So, all right, guys, video's gotten a bit long, so let me go ahead and end it. So, thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate all of the subscribers so like comment subscribe to the videos um, and I will have some more of my home garden coming up here really quick so I'm still doing this whole editing thing now whereas before I just record the video and one take and upload it but I'm actually taking time to edit this stuff now so uh, they take a little bit longer but I want to make it really uh, make it a neat experience for you guys all right, till next time, Rick out. Have a good one. Bye.